YouTube channel this morning. And uh, we also welcome those who are watching on uh, Cable TV Channel 15 this morning, on New Wave Cable TV Channel 15, as it is Monday. And we welcome our good friend Laura Greenhouse in this morning. Good morning, Laura. How are you this morning? Good morning, Mark. Very well. Thank All you. All right. Well, yes. it's great to have you in this morning. as a busy weekend. Yes, it was. And uh, we went to see War Room. Oh, yeah. Again. Wow. I saw it once with my friend, and I just had to take the kids. Right. It was Blaze said, Mom, that's the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Really? And that really made me feel good. And Lucy said, Mom, it's tied with Inside Out. But, yes, it was the best movie that I've ever seen <laughs> along with Inside Out. Along uh, with Inside Out yeah, for Lucy. All yeah, right. but, but it was good. It was yeah, a good weekend. How yeah. about you? Yeah, not bad at all. Okay. Not bad at all. I did not get to see the blood moon last night. Yes. It was cloudy where I was at, okay. but uh, I've seen some awesome pictures. Yes. And I saw the picture that you sent me. Yes. And I saw some just jaw-dropping pictures over Jerusalem and Israel. Oh, good. I haven't got to see oh, them Oh, my yet. goodness. Yeah, Ooh. they're beautiful. Oh, good. I can't wait to see them. Yeah. Well, and, uh, it was really something. Yeah, and uh, it was. I mean, you know, now the blood moon has passed, and, you yes. know, and I, we were talking off the air. You know, now the scoffers are coming out, Laura. Yes. Which was, is to be expected from mm-hmm. people, but mm-hmm. you know what? I I still look and and say you know what we are given warning before destruction and nobody yes. has said in the predic- in the predictions of these blood moons that no. the world is going to end no, no. it's all been <laughs> no. signs that God sends us right. to be watchful right. for His return right absolutely and you know that shows you when you hear the world ending that that's coming from a secular mouth mm-hmm. yes. because we know it's. It's going to end for us, mm-hmm. um, and it's going to be moving on to something so wonderful, so incredible. We don't even have words Amen. to describe it, but their world is going to remain, mm-hmm. and it's going to become drastically worse, and it's going to become something like they've never even seen, not on the worst movie, any Steven Spielberg, anything. You know, I, I've been seeing some posts on on uh, on uh, social media, and you know, the, everything calling John Hagee a crazy old man. Yeah. You know, for mm-hmm. his predictions, and you know, he, he's only do, he's only talking about what's written in Scripture. Joel uh, Joel yes. uh, two thirty one talks about uh, uh, the blood and sun. Uh, you know, uh, uh, turn to blood and yes. the sun to darkness. Right. Even in in the book of Acts, chapter right. twenty, I think he yes. started uh, seventeen through twenty one. It talks okay. about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's just that he's only quoting what scripture, what the Bible is talking about. Here. Absolutely. And we are giving warnings before the destruction happens. Absolutely. And, you know, there are many, as we've talked about several times, that we're looking to these dates. And but nobody, if we if Christians has learned anything over the years, we have learned don't set dates. Oh, yeah, exactly. We know not to set dates. And I never heard any of them Mm-mm. proclaim Jesus Christ is coming back on da 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 da. I didn't hear that. Mm-mm. Now, are those days to watch? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Do they make you wonder? And as, as well as we know the scriptures as Christians, does it really make us wonder? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and is that okay? Sure. Sure it is. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. He wants us to long for his return. He wants us. He commands us to watch. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. what's wrong with watching and wondering, hmm, could this be the time frame? We don't know. But like I said off air, those people that are laughing, not that we want it, but the Christians will have the last laugh. Mm -hmm. And and I don't mean that mean, but you understand what I'm trying to say, that where is this promise coming? The scripture says, you know, and they're scoffing. And remember, we talked about David Reagan says, I don't believe that's necessarily the secular world. I believe that's many so-called Christians that are scoffing and laughing. Oh, yeah, ho, 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 having a big chuckle. You guys were looking for the rapture. Well, we were hoping. Mm-hmm. We were hoping. Right. You know, right. there's a lot of us that's sick to death of all this junk that's going on, and we're ready to go home. Mm-hmm. And if you like it, have yourself another serving of it. But me, for one, I don't want to leave too early. I don't want to leave my family, and I want to help. You know, if sure. there's trials to go through i want to be here as long as i can but when the lord's ready i'm ready Mm -hmm. (laughs) don't he's not gonna have to ask me twice that's right that's right (laughs) i'm going you know and as far as the as far as the blood moon i want to read this real fast uh genesis 114 we spoke about this before but i prayed this yesterday mark Mm -hmm. um 
It says, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Okay, let's pause on this. Rewind. Did you hear that? Let them serve as signs. The lights in the skies. That's the sun, moon, and the stars. And God's saying right there, they will be signs to you. Now, we don't know exactly what he's trying to say is, but we are very suspicious. We are very much wondering, is it war on Israel? Is it this problem? Is it this? Is it this? It's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. A blood moon, we know. It, it's not happy, happy bubbles are going to shoot down from the sky. All right. There's coming trouble. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It reminds me of Lucy. Um, they were outside playing with some kids last night. And, you know, we, she knew the watch mm. and she was the first one. There was 10 of us outside at least. And she <laughs> went, mom, the moon, the moon, but it wasn't red yet. And she knew around nine o'clock. And so anyway, about nine, oh, a little before nine, I guess she was like, mom, we got to go outside. You know, we don't want to miss any of this. And so she gets outside ahead of me. Lucy's always first. And we have to go down our sidewalk and get past all the trees before we can see it. And she runs down there and here's what she said. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening, Mama, it's, it's happening. happening. And wow. I thought, oh, you know, that just touched my soul. Sure. It touched my heart. You know, it reminds me of Deuteronomy um, 11, 19. And I'd like to read that to you. Yeah. I know we're, yeah. we're getting no, close you're, here. No, you're fine. You're All fine. right. Go ahead. Uh, you shall therefore express these words of mine on your heart and on your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontals on your forehead. Okay, this next one. You shall teach them to your sons, talking to them when you sit in your talking of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. It's telling us right there that God's word should be rolling around mm -hmm. through us all the time. And we need to teach our kids and talk to them when we're sitting down for dinner. Talk to them when we're walking down the street or when we're driving in our car. Whenever you put them to bed at night, whenever we get up in the morning, this is the day that the Lord has made. I mean, start singing God's praises and, and tell them and fill them like a gas tank full of God's word every single day. And if we do that, and I'm not saying I get an A mark, but I mm. certainly work on it. If they do that, when there's a blood moon in the sky, they're going to scream, it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's happening with joy and with energy and excitement. Mm -hmm. And then here comes Blaze, and, and he comes tippy-toeing out, and it kind of rained, you know, that day, and he didn't have his shoes on. And he kind of hugs me, and he looks at the moon. He said, Mom, it's a little bit scary. Mm. And I said, I understand. But I said, Blaze, it's mostly exciting mm -hmm. because we know where these blood moons are going to bring us. We know our Lord and Savior is speaking to us. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get our attention and telling us something. And I said, you know, Blaze, John the Baptist might walk up to you someday and say, Blaze, tell me about that blood moon mm -hmm. that you saw at the end of the 70th Jubilee or at the end of the 70th Shemitah and, and that was on the Feast of Tabernacles and that was a super blood moon that never ever happened before in all of creation. Tell me about it Blaze Greenhouse. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know? Sure. It's an exciting time that we're living in oh, yeah. right now. Oh it is. It is and, 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 and not to be ashamed of it. You know no. people shouldn't be scared. You shouldn't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Just get your, your life right with God yeah. And yes. don't look back on the past. Yes. You know, put the past. People say, how can I be forgiven of what I've done in the past? You can be forgiven. Yes. You know, that's what God, he, he forgives you. You move on right. and you live for God mm -hmm. and nothing more. That's you know, right. focus on him. And, and that's mm -hmm. the main thing. And, and it is exciting times that we're living in. And as we've said many, many times, you know, look at everything that's going on around in our mm -hmm. country now. Yes. And, and uh, that's, you know. Uh, Russia and China are getting more and more stronger together. Mm -hmm. The Gog Magog uh -huh. war is uh, yep. lining up in Ezekiel is getting much and much more, more clear. If you if you read, if you watch the news, yes. and you know, I've been kind of reading about that in the Bible more and more, and then Good. watching the news, uh -huh. and it, it's making more and more sense. Yes. Not that I didn't read it before, but when you uh -huh. see all these things going on. It's all adding up more and more together, yes. and it just it just makes you hungry more and more to 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 get into the Word of God because all these things are happening. Yes, and you know that Bible is coming to more and more and more 
truth that's right. coming out of it that's each right. and every day we go on. That's right. And if we're not reading the Bible, we are doing ourselves such a disservice mm-hmm. right now, especially because it's almost illuminated because it's being spoken out of the broadcaster's mouths and it was written thousands of years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. When we come back, what are you going to focus on today? Yes, um, I'd like to talk in Jeremiah and um, could God be done with us and not hear our prayers anymore. Mm, that's good. Yes. Out of the book of Jeremiah. Out of the All book right. of Jeremiah. All mm-hmm. right. Well, we're going to do that when we come back okay. with Laura. We're going to get into the Word of God and the book of Jeremiah. She's going to share some information with mm-hmm. us this morning mm-hmm. here on Vine Morning Show. We encourage you to stay tuned. It is 9 o'clock and more to come. The Vine Morning Show on a Monday continues at Real Life Radio. This is your home for better. Jesus is. That's from the Never Claim here at Real Life Radio 105.5 and 90.9. The Vine, the best Christian music for you and your family. It is 9.10 and the Vine Morning Show on this Monday morning. I'm Mark along with our good friend Laura Greenhouse. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Mark. And uh, you said something just before we went to break that uh, people were probably thinking... (gasps) You really think that might be happening? Mm-hmm. But we're going to focus on what you said and also look at uh, the book of Jeremiah this morning. Yes, right? yes. And, you know, um, I've talked about this mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. Could we get to the point of no return? And have we gotten to the point of no return? And kind of way down deep, I kind of feel like it. But my next comment was, I don't mean to contradict the scriptures Mm -hmm. in Chronicles where it says, you know, if we will humble ourselves and pray, the Lord will heal our nation. But, but, J.D. Frog, I'm going to give him the credit for it because I'm not smart enough to do it myself. But he brought this up on one of his sermons last week. He said, what about Jeremiah chapter 7? Verses 16 and 17. Um, I'm going to read some of it to you. Um, Jeremiah was told, As for you, do not pray for this people or lift up a cry or prayer for them. Do not intercede with me, for I will not hear you. Mm. Mm. So he's telling Jeremiah, Don't pray for Israel. Don't pray for Jerusalem because I'm done. I'm I'm not even going to hear your prayers. That's pretty, that's pretty scary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could we be to a point where our prayers lifting up our nation, our prayers asking God to be merciful in his judgment, which we know judgment is coming. We know it is. We, we, we deserve our spanking Mm. and we're going to get it. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. firmly believe it as many thousands of us believe it. But could we be to a point of no return, just like Jeremiah, don't even bother to pray? Hmm. Now, his comment was this, and this, this deserves to be spoken. He said, he said, I humbly respect the opinion of many of my friends and Christian brothers and sisters, like Franklin Graham, mm-hmm. that is really rising this campaign to, to pray hard, pray for America, And who knows? We don't know if God has just totally sealed it up or not. But could he? Could he have? Could we be dancing on that line? Absolutely, we could. But that is something to think about. God can become completely angered and disgusted with us, with our sin and with our idolatry, that don't even bother praying Mm. to me. That's a scary place to be, Mark. Mm -hmm. Could we be there? Mm. We've done it all. Mm. You know we have. Yeah. And just shaking our fist at God and, and throwing that stuff on, on the enti- Empire State Building and, and the One World Tower and and taking God's covenant rainbow and twisting it and mm. throwing a lady in jail for standing upon her religious beliefs. Mm. And there's more. Mm. There's more. There's so much more. Oh, right. my goodness. There's There's a... He put nine things on there why he thinks that we've gone too far. And one of the first ones was this. He said that two students were expelled or almost expelled. One of them drew a gun on a piece of paper. And the other one must have munched out a a Pop-Tart in the form of a gun. Mm. And got expelled or close to it. 
But yet, the 14-year-old that brings what looks like a bomb to school and scares people to death gets invited to the White House. Mm. Mark. Mm. I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm, I'm speechless. I, I know. I, when I saw that and I'm thinking, I just I had to shake my head. I, and I, I had a lot of people I talked to did the same thing, you know. It's like unbelievable. It's totally and absolutely unbelievable. What if you would have gone to an airport with that thing? Mm-hmm. You or me. Oh, Walked yeah. Walked up to the airport. You know, how far would we have gotten with that? And here's what J.D. Frog said. He said that this kid didn't make it. It's commercially manufactured, and it was commercially bought. Mm. And yet he gets exalted, and the child that makes a gun out of a Mm Pop-Tart, you know, he is in a scoop of trouble. Now, this boy did get in trouble. I'm not saying that he didn't, and I don't want to discount that he did get in trouble. Um, but he also got exalted by our president, mm. and I didn't know that. But anyway, that was number one on yeah. Farag's list. Um, number two, and I may not get him in the exact order, but you know, Jenny came in and told us about the Christians in Iraq. Yes, I remember that. Yes, yes. and we are now, my eyes have kind of been opened even more to what's happening. And he said, he talked about it was evil and unspeakable acts of cruelty. And we know that they are, if they don't convert, that they will behead their children in Mm. front of them. Mark, could you imagine? Mm. Could you imagine? And you know what? You know what? We had so much going on at this moment. Um, Tom and Blaze was watching a golf tournament, and Blaze or Tom or somebody was talking to me, and Lucy came up to me, and she sat down to me. And she said, Mom, she said, she said, um, If somebody, here's what I thought she said. If somebody asked you, do you believe in Jesus? And if you said yes, they would kill you, would you do that? And I said, yes, I would hope I would. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark, I'm not saying that I wouldn't get freaked out like Peter did and deny. Lord, help me. I hope not. I've thought about this and rehearsed it in my mind, and I don't flippantly say, yes, I would. I've given it some grievous thought, Mm -hmm. and I pray to God that I would. And I said, yes. And then her eyes got big. And like I said, there was a lot going on in the room. And she goes, no, Mom, here's what I said. Would you let someone kill me? Mm. Oh, my. Woo! And I don't know. I, she's heard this talk before. And, sure. you know, it's been discussed. And she knows what is happening all around the world. And my eyes got big. And, and the, the topic quickly changed. I got distracted. And she saw my eyes get big. But she wondered, Mom, would you deny Jesus in order to save my life? Or would you have me killed? My nine-year-old asked me that last night. Mm. And Mark, we would love to think you'd be strong enough to do that. Mm -hmm. But would we? We're certainly not going to be strong enough if we don't exercise that in our mind, you know, and think about that ahead of time. And there's, and, and I'm going to be graphic just for a moment, tastefully graphic, but there was one instance that I heard about um, like a stretching machine. Mark, you tell me if they put that precious new, new baby of yours, that grandbaby mm-hmm. yours, on a stretching machine, and you watch that child in sheer mm. agony, could you be like these people? Mm. Oh, my. Could you? I don't, I mean, come on. Yeah. This is some rough stuff, and we need to think about this. We need this. to think about it. You're and, right. And we need to put ourselves in those people's shoes, and we need to pray for them. And I'm not praying for them enough. And shame on me. We're so caught up in our life. We're so caught up in our daily list. We're so caught up in everything we need to get done on this piece of paper that we're forgetting that our brothers and sisters are fleeing on foot. Give us your car or give us your kids. Mm-hmm. Well, we're all going to give them the car. Sure. Who cares about the car? But then some of them don't get let go quite so easily. You deny, or I'm going to cut your kid's head off in front of you. Mm. Now, this is where we're living, and I hate to be this way, but somebody's got to tell you, folks, this is really happening, and this could come to America. Oh, yes, it could. Oh, yes, we're already 
just on the cusp of it. Well, we're on the verge of it. Yeah, we're so close. If if we're not there, if and we're not and there. if we're not there already, and right. we're just not seeing it yet. Right. Exactly. And I hate to talk about it, and my chest just feels like jelly talking about it. But we have to say this. And another little thing, and, and I'll shut up. No, just tell fine. you a few more things. They're such good points, and they deserve to be told yes. again. And he really does his homework. He said that a Denver City Council is opposing the opening of a Chick-fil-A whose CEO is a Christian against same-sex marriage while they're rolling this huge campaign of Rainbow Doritos. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes, and nobody has a problem with that, showing their support. That's okay. We welcome it. We'll probably see Rainbow Doritos in every store from here to New York City, and that will be just fine. Absolutely. But a uh, godly group of people. Have you ever been to a Chick-fil-A? Yes, I have. Isn't that not an amazing it's, experience? It's an amazing experience how friendly those people are there. Yes. You yes. can tell they've got yep. the heart of God. Yes. and But yet that's evil, Mark. Mm -hmm. That's evil. Sure. Yes. And yeah. all of this other stuff is good. And that's where, Mark, isn't it happening so rapidly? It, it, it seems like it more and more each week you hear something new. Yes. And it, you, you have to wonder how much more will God put up with That's it? right. You That's know, right. are we on the verge? Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. how 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 close are we? Yes, how close are yeah. we? Yeah, and how close are we to getting stripped off the radio, Mark? Exactly. How close are we to getting our churches? Churches, uh, yes. Yeah, all the exemptions are gone, and and all of your tithe is not going to count. It's not going to matter. The Christian schools, they look for them to be attacked first. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about it, but how close are we? to just being absolutely a pagan, secular, no Christians allowed to speak a word nation. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It is. If it's not here already. Right. All right. More to come with Laura here in just a little bit here on the Vine Morning Show. We encourage you to stay tuned. Even so come, that is Passion with Kristen Stanfill here at Real Life Radio, 90.9 and 105.5 The Vine. It's 927, and we welcome you back to The Vine Morning Show on this Monday morning. Those watching on our YouTube channel and also cable TV channel 15, good morning and uh, welcome. As uh, it's The Vine Morning Show with our good friend Laura Greenhouse, host of Keeping Watch, heard twice daily. Here uh, Monday through Friday. And Laura, yeah, we are to keep watch. If yes. any time, now is a good time to keep watch. Mm -mm -mm, no kidding. So much going on. Oh, it's never ending. Just, just pages and pages and pages I have here of such good news, mm -hmm. Mark. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. You know, I... I, my friend told me last week, you, you got anything good, Laura? You got anything <laughs> uplifting? And I'm <laughs> like, you know, we win, Mark. We know that we win in and, the end. In, in the end, uh, in the end, we know who the winner is. That's, that's right. For sure. That's you right. Know, the story is told from beginning to end. Yes. Yes. And then at this point, it's right up spot on. It is. And like we talked about, we could not write a script. Mm -hmm. Couldn't write, hand write a script right now that would be better than how the world is in place for Revelation just to be mm -hmm. busting open exactly. and all sorts of end time events to take place. Um, we were talking about the list of nine things that J.D. Frog had brought up that what makes him think that we're at the point of no return. Our nation has just, our world has just fallen so far off into the pit that there's no turning back mm -hmm. and you know he brought up the Planned Parenthood nothing sicker than that oh my horrible yeah, exactly. horrible mess and I I just can't understand how anybody could think that's okay mm -hmm. I, I, I don't get it and you know one of them said something about the veil there being a veil over our leaders eyes mm. and you think about that so many of the people, the leaders throughout the world, are doing such crazy things that you think they're just doing exactly the opposite of what they should be doing. What are they thinking? Mm -hmm. What are they thinking? Mm -hmm. And Mark Biltz made a good comment. He said, sin causes blindness. And wow. I thought, oh, yeah. you know what? The deeper you are in sin, the, the more the blind. blind you are. Yeah. yeah. 
the more you just can't see it. And you could really think with all of your heart that you're doing the right thing, but you are so ridden with sin and your life is so without God that you're missing the mark by a mile and you just can't see it with your own two eyes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that makes sense. But so many people, you know, one day they're going to see, they're going to see all the mistakes that they made, all the deals that got made that were wrong, and they're going to understand it the way we understand it through God's eyes. That's right. Um, the Iran deal, you know, and they're chanting death to America and death to Israel. And you know what, you know what Frog said? He said he recently read an article that the Ayatollah something or another. I Ayatollah Khomeini. Yes, okay, mm -hmm. all right, that he said um the chant death to america is nothing personal mark i, I, I take that person <laughs> I, I think most so. people would <laughs> oh my goodness oh my. it's wow. nothing personal mm. really we're supposed to be dummy dummies enough to believe that their chance death to america we shouldn't take personal mm. oh my goodness in what universe? I mean, that's crazy. And another thing that he talked about, all the rockets that just keep falling upon Israel. And you never hear about it. Mm. Just rarely. And Eckstein, you know, he's one of the major representatives for um, Rabbi Eckstein for Israel. And he says, almost on a daily basis, they're fleeing from rockets. And don't hear anything about it, mm. you know. But evil's good and good's evil, Mark. Don't forget that. And here's something that I, I wanted to read to you. I saw this on, on Frog's uh, message. It said, By 1944, 11,000 rockets had been fired at England by the Nazis. When Churchill retaliated, he was called a war hero. Okay, by 2014, 11,000 rockets had been fired at Israel by Hamas. When Netanyahu retaliated, he was called a war criminal. Mm. Can you believe? And it's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. We know mm -hmm. it's true. People are dogging on Israel like they are the problem. They're not the problem. And Mark, if I knew none of it, not any of it, it doesn't matter. My holy Bible says stand with Israel, love those people, and bless them. That's all I need mm -hmm. to know. My God in heaven said you stand with Israel. That's all I need to know. End of question, period. Mm -hmm. It's it. It's it. That's right. Yeah. And why can't we understand the simplest of things standing with Israel? Mm. Don't understand. No, me so. either. You know, and, and the thing is, they're, they're our friends, and, mm -hmm. and we do. We need to stand with them. And, and you're right. They're, those people live in fear each and every day. Every they, day. You know, people lose sleep on a 24-hour on a basis over there. That's I right. told you the story about the girl who uh, was the video. She was doing a video on, on a day. In uh, her driving from commuting from, uh, she was going to school, okay, yes. and she was going to, to a university in Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. and she says, I just want to show you what my daily routine is each and every day, and on a daily basis, she could hear the air raid sirens going off, and they're instructed to pull off to the side of the road and get out of your car and take shelter. And she videotaped that whole thing, and she was frightened. Young girl, and a young girl, 17-year-old girl. Wow. And this is something they deal with each and every day in that yes, country. Yes, that's right. And we would we put up with that? Mm, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But we expect them to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that famous quote was, if our enemies would stop firing at us in Israel, there would be no more turmoil. But if we stopped firing our missiles, Israel would be no more. Mm. And it's true. Mm -hmm. They don't want to fight anybody. Why can't people get that through their thick heads? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. don't want to fight people. They they want to be left alone. But they're not going to leave them alone. No. They believe that's their land and they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clearly wrong. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Have you ever read the book Son of Hamas? No, I have not. I okay. want to. I All hear right. that's a very good book. Mm -hmm. It. I haven't read it, but I've listened to the man that wrote it mm -hmm. who was a son of Hamas. Okay. And it is incredible. And you know what he said? It's so simple, and we don't think about this. He says, who do you think those people are praying to five times a day? Hmm. They're praying to their greatest enemy and don't even know it. Hmm. 
and they are led and they really believe that that land was promised to them, that it's their land and they're going to wipe the Jews off the map. That's in the Bible. Mm. And it's it's funny, but they are being led by Satan himself and don't even know it. Son of Hamas, he I don't even think he uses his real name because he can't. Sure. Um, but he really, uh, I think what happened is he got captured by the Jews and they told him that if he would be a spy, that they would spare his life and, and not keep him in prison. And through all of that, he got saved. Wow. He got saved and he saved many of the Jews undoubtedly. And he went on to write this book. And that was one of the things that he wrote in there. They are praying to their very enemy and don't even know it. Wow. Mm. Isn't that something? Wow. Son of Hamas, the book. Son of right? Hamas, yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you get a chance, read the book. Oh, I'm right? sure it's great. I have not. But yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be something to check in and see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The book, Son of Hamas. So, yeah, we're going to come back here and talk more here in just a moment with Laura. That's the Newsboys and their song called Guilty here at Real Life Radio, 105.5 and 90.9 Divine. As we welcome back our uh, listeners and viewers this morning on our YouTube channel and also cable TV channel 15. Good morning and welcome back to the Vine Morning Show as our good friend Laura is with us this morning. And Laura, there's something going on in Mount Vernon that's uh, yes. that started last night. Yes. You want to talk about it a little bit, Yes. Right? You know, I haven't been yet, but I'm planning on going possibly tomorrow night, but it's Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. Mm-hmm. And I've been to one, I think, in Marion years ago, and you'll never forget it. Oh, yeah. You'll never forget it. And my friend went last night, and she said it was absolutely incredible. She said, Laura, you've got to go. This will totally motivate you to do the things that you're doing. And she said, I'm not going to tell her names. I wouldn't want to embarrass her, but here's what she told me. She said, Laura, at the end, they have you all, you know, bow your head Mm -hmm. and they don't want anybody looking. And they asked how many uh, were unsaved. And she says, I know I shouldn't have, but I peaked. And she said, about 50% of the room. Wow. Yes. And then she says, the next question was, how many of you feel like you're out of, um, you know, relationship with the Lord and, and backslidden state? And she said it was almost everybody. Is that right? Yeah, she said it was a great huge party. So people. I was going to ask, how, how was the crowd? Pastor Kent Jackson was on last week, and we were talking about oh, this. Good. And uh, he said, you know, they're expecting pretty decent crowds. Oh. And the, Huge. She said it was, she says, she told me, she says she might go back tonight. She said, I'll let you know about tomorrow night. But she said we would need to get there a half hour early. Wow. It was so packed. So packed. So wow. anyway, but it starts at 7 o'clock. It's at the Family Life Church. Am I getting this yes, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah so anyway, wanna, yeah. it. I really believe, and if you've got some kids that aren't right with God, some neighbors, um, a husband, a wife, some coworkers, anybody that you can drag to this thing it is a witnessing tool like none other Mm -hmm. it really is they're very powerful and and you know they don't recommend it for young young kids but but if you do have young kids and mom and dad you think well you know i I don't have anybody to watch my children take them anyway because they've got children's ministry there provided oh wonderful see i didn't even know that and pastor ken he was on with me last week and we were talking about this and 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 this was a life-changing event for him oh i'm sure as well well, and, and it's very powerful. You're right. It's in a powerful drama yes, presentation. And, I mean, drag them there. Beg them there if you have to. It's that mm-hmm. important. And one more thing, and sure, I know I need yeah. to be quick. No. Um, I don't know if all towns are doing this or just Mount Vernon, but it's so good I needed to tell this. Um, it's going around Facebook to put blue decor on the outside of your house on September 30th stating that you stand with your police Amen. and your sheriff and you know like the royal blue color if yes. you've got a ribbon you can tie around your tree or get some crepe paper and make something to tie on your your front door or your post or something do that in honor of our policemen and our sheriff and let them know that you stand with them yes please and do Amen. yes the schools if this is a teacher listening a principal anyone if you could decorate it's september 30th mm-hmm. if i've got it right mm-hmm. to do something to show them hey we stand behind you yeah, amen because mm-hmm. if anything right now the police need your blessing absolutely 
Trust me. Trust me. If I know any about that, I know firsthand. Mm -hmm. And that we stand with them and we uh, want them to do their job and want them to feel free Mm -hmm. to do their job to keep law and order in this country. Amen. Amen. Remember that on the 30th. That's great. Great Mm -hmm. stuff, Laura. Thanks. Okay. That's good for. I'm glad you brought that yes. up about Heaven's Gates and oh, Hell's yes. Flames. Yeah, go, that's go, go. that's a great program. Mm-hmm. All right, hey, we're going to come back here in a moment.